And there is footage of U.S. President Donald Trump and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe giving a press conference in Palm Beach, Florida, committing to the denuclearization of North Korea. And for more on this, we have Dr. Ellen Frost, who's an expert on U.S.-Japanese relations and a senior advisor to the East-West Center. She joins me now from Royalton, Vermont, in the United States. Great to have you with us, Ellen. It seems that the U.S. is pushing ahead with its meeting with North Korea without much input from its strongest ally in Asia, which is Japan. What did Japan get out of this meeting? Well, if you look at the specific list of issues that divide the two countries, uh, Mr. Abe gained only one victory of sorts, and that is the very public and very firm commitment on the part of President Trump to raise the issue of abductions when he meets with Kim Jong-un. Americans don't know a lot about this, but it's a very big issue in Japan and very important to, President, uh, to Prime Minister Abe who, as you know, is faced with uh, certain uh, accusations and scandals at home. But on a, a broader level, um, I think that the uh, decision about North Korea uh, and summits and so on probably has a lot of uh, lower-level communication that we don't necessarily know about. The U.S.-Japan alliance is the bedrock of U.S. policy in Asia. And I think President Trump made that quite clear. He also showed, uh, and this is another victory, I would argue, um, that he admires Prime Minister Abe. Uh, Prime Minister Abe used the name Donald several times. This has a history going back to the Reagan administration. The Japanese, this signals a, a closeness to the American president. Uh, and I think there's clearly good chemistry between them. So uh, it, it was not ideal from a Japanese point of view, but I don't think it was um, a failure either. Do you think that Abe was able to communicate to Trump that Japan has concerns about its own security with regard to North Korea? Oh, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Uh, but Japanese officials at all levels have been communicating that for a long time. Let's not forget that a North Korean missile flew right over Japanese territory in, in the past, and the geography alone indicates uh, how crucial it is for Japan's own security that there be stability on the Korean Peninsula. I'm pretty sure that communications among our military officials and political officials are really in agreement about that. And of course, the Japanese Prime Minister presumably wants to return home with some good news on these steel and aluminum tariffs. Do you think Abe got anything from Trump in return for his loyalty? Uh, I, on the steel and aluminum issue, it doesn't seem that he did. And uh, that hurts because even though Japan exports only a small amount of what it produces, and, and this is not a major issue in the trade balance, um, it, nevertheless, trade uh, partnerships have tremendous symbolic uh, significance. And so being left out of a group that includes Europe, Canada, and Mexico is hurtful. But uh, as a former trade official myself, I can tell you that the devil is in the details. There are many, many different kinds of steel. And we haven't really seen which ones are going to be hit the most and which ones Japan produces. Uh, but that is a, a, a sore point. There's no doubt about that. Right. Dr. Ellen Frost, it's been a privilege to have you with us. Thank you for your insight.